10 minutes to understand why Proton is leaving Switzerland. Picture the postcard, a clear blue sky sliced by jagged mountain ridges, lakes shimmering in electric blue, rolling green meadows, and faintly superimposed the marketing mantra repeated for two decades, Swiss privacy. Switzerland, the paradise of personal privacy. The place where you use ultra-secure messaging or email services that log nothing about you, not even your IP address, and grant you a measure of anonymity. But in 2025, that dreamscape starts to crack. Switzerland is about to tip, from a hushed realm steeped in digital neutrality, into a non-stop surveillance system even Snowden couldn't have imagined in his worst nightmares. So, how did we get here? Proton, the global icon of encrypted email, has just announced it's moving part of its infrastructure out of Switzerland, bound for Germany and Norway, with an investment of 100 million Swiss francs. An earthquake in European tech, the Confederation, long the showcase of data protection, now risks becoming more intrusive than the pre-Snowden NSA. So why? Why would a country so neutral, so stable, slide toward real-time surveillance? And above all, why is Andy Yen, Proton's founder, now choosing the Norwegian reindeer over the Swiss marmot? Let's start by reminding ourselves what Proton is. Born in 2014 in the offices of CERN researchers, the European Organization for Nuclear Research, the company was built on a simple idea. If the web is a village, everyone deserves a house with opaque walls. Proton Mail therefore popularized end-to-end -end encryption, stripped IP addresses from outgoing headers, and banned any advertising use of your data. Bit by bit, Proton bolted on new, wildly popular services. A no-logs VPN, an end-to-end -end encrypted cloud, a password manager, and just lately, Lumo, a conversational AI that stores nothing, tracks nothing, and erases your prompts the moment they're processed. From its base in Geneva, Proton has won over more than 100 million users worldwide. Everything was running smoothly, privacy paradise in the land of Cantons, until five letters jammed the gears, OSCPT 2025, a bureaucratic acronym with potentially devastating fallout. It threatens to blow up Proton's entire model, and with it, Switzerland's image as a digital sanctuary. Behind those five letters hides the overhaul of the communication surveillance ordinance. The rule is brutally simple. If your service tops 5,000 users, you must build a technical interface that can hand over, on official request, your customer's metadata, source and destination IPs, network location, data volume, full timestamps, and keep them for six months. Cross the 1 million user mark and the bar rises. That interface must be able to stream those data almost in real time as soon as the Swiss Correspondent Surveillance Service flips the switch on a targeted probe. It's no longer about answering a judge. It's about maintaining a live feed, primed to dump information by the second. Exactly as if Swiss Post installed a photocopier at the exit of every sorting center just in case. Minimal on-server retention? Gone. In its place. Immediate centralized government access. And we're not even counting the draft spec that already bakes in anomaly detection algorithms to sift through that torrent of metadata. Yes, you heard right. Switzerland is test driving an upgraded black box, not far from the one France's Constitutional Council partially struck down in 2025. You might be thinking, France already keeps connection logs for a year, the US has its intelligence laws, and the EU is hashing out its own access framework. So, why all the fuss? Precisely. Elsewhere, at least on paper, the mindset is still one of targeted surveillance. In France, internet providers do have to store a year's worth of metadata, but nothing goes live. It takes a subpoena, a legal framework, a judge, and then only a narrow extract. In the United States, even the all-powerful NSA works under FISA 702. The data it vacuums up has to pass through selectors approved by the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Court. Without a specific identifier, there's no access, at least officially. Inside the European Union, the Court of Justice has been hammering since 2014 that blanket, indiscriminate retention violates fundamental rights. Switzerland, though, wants to push the slider further, plug a permanent pipe between your apps and the authorities, a channel ready to spew metadata the moment a warrant drops. No manual filtering, no delay, just an almost instant feed by default. That's the difference, and that's why Proton is sounding the alarm. Because that red line, no one else in Europe has dared to cross it. Andy Yen summed it up in one killer sentence. Our services in Switzerland would be less private than Gmail in the US, totally indefensible. Inside Proton, the siren didn't go off overnight. Back in 2021, the company was already forced to hand over the IP address of an environmental activist, a brutal reminder that no jurisdiction is an absolute bunker. But the new Swiss bill is a whole different scale. It strikes at the founding principle of radical minimization. And when your entire promise boils down to three words, no logs ever, it's hard to explain that the state is now vacuuming up every connection. 
Hence the decision, made public in July 2025, to shift 100 million Swiss francs in server investments to Frankfurt and Oslo. First product affected, Lumo, Proton's in-house AI assistant. No way, Andy Yen says, are they processing encrypted conversations in a country that wants to siphon them off? Why Germany? Because the Bundesrepublik is the undefeated champion of safeguards. The Constitutional Court has struck down mass retention three times, and the CJEU keeps watch. Why Norway? Because it enforces the GDPR, powers its data centers with hydropower, and remains politically stable. Bonus. The subpolar climate provides natural cooling, a real ecological perk. Proton is keeping its headquarters in Geneva, so it doesn't abandon the legislative fight, but the hard drives already have a one-way ticket north. Quick snapshot of the reactions, Threema is cheering. The Swiss Digital Society calls it legalized mass burglary. Even some liberal MPs slam the overreach. The lone dissenting voice, Infomaniac. The other Swiss cloud heavyweight claims Proton pushes the needle too far toward total anonymity, making investigators' jobs harder. Well, at least we know where they stand. So why does Byrne keep pushing? Federal agencies argue they need to track the encrypted chatter of organized crime, the counter-terror police demand parity with legacy telecom operators, and the Justice Ministry, now headed by Beat Chans, wants to prove its reliability to Schengen partners. Add a quiet budget argument. Outsourcing storage and indexing to the platforms costs less than firing off a thousand subpoenas a year. Top it off with lenient local case law. In 2018, the federal tribunal ruled blanket retention constitutional, a green light the CJEU would have killed. End result, Switzerland charges ahead where most democracies are still riding the brakes. But at what cost? Proton employs 200 people directly and enjoys global clout. If it leaves, the Swiss privacy brand crumbles. According to data that include figures from the University of St. Gallen, confidentiality-driven services, finance, insurance, secure hosting, together account for more than 10% of Swiss GDP. By threatening those players, Byrne takes both an economic and symbolic gamble. Capital is flighty, source code even more so. Andy Yen loves to quote a brutal line. Trust is earned in years, lost in minutes, and measured in terabytes. When your customers pay not to be tracked, a single law can send them packing, click included. Let's pause on what Proton does, or rather doesn't, collect. No persistent IP address, no ID document, no ad cookies, no headers pinpointing your location. Your email hits their servers, leaves them encrypted. Proton can't read it. Same for the VPN, no source IP, no session length on disk. An audit confirmed it. As for Lumo, every chat vanishes from the servers after 48 hours, or instantly if you flip on ghost mode. That subscription model, sometimes paid in Bitcoin or cash, exists only because there's zero data resale behind the curtain. Which is why the Swiss bill feels to Proton like a gun pointed at its DNA. You can't promise no logs ever if the state demands everything on the spot. Even with content still encrypted, the metadata scream. The old dilemma, bend or bail. Andy Yin grabs his suitcase while firing a warning to the Confederation. Legislate outside the guardrails and you'll drive away the very firms that make your tech scene shine. Opponents are already dreaming of a referendum. Switzerland, the homeland of direct democracy, could soon watch its citizens vote no on a real-time data pipeline. Meanwhile, hard drives are powering down in self-defense. Timeline check. The public consultation closed May 6, 2025, and the bill shot to both chambers, National Council, then Council of States. Between ping-pong amendments and a possible referendum, the standoff will drag into 2026 at least. Proton isn't waiting. Come September, its first AI nodes light up in Frankfurt. Mail and VPN clusters follow, aiming for an almost total Swiss pullout by 2030. 100 million francs headed to Germany and Norway, quite a thunderclap, especially since the collocation contracts were inked back in 2021. Looks like Proton saw the storm coming. Bigger questions remain. If Switzerland mandates continuous taps, who's next? The they do it, why not us? Argument is a constant temptation in homeland security, but the Swiss example also spotlights the hazard. Tarnishing your reputation can cost more than missing a few interceptions. As former judge Jean-Paul Janotat told Le Temps, a society that watches everyone blindly goes blind to the real signals. In Intel work, quantity never substitutes for quality, and a bonfire of metadata can smother the spark of an effective investigation. You can see the paradox taking shape. To protect civil liberties, Switzerland is gearing up to monitor every citizen in real time. To stay true to its mission, Proton is leaving the country that gave it life. Bitter irony, the neutral land of the Geneva Conventions is adopting a setup that Brussels and Washington still eye with dread. Neutrality, Andy Yen reminds us, isn't indifference. It's choosing to protect without judging. If the Confederation drops that principle online, it may lose more than a unicorn, trust, the invisible gold that keeps the connected economy spinning. So, what sticks? First, no legend is eternal. The Swiss privacy brand can crack in six articles of law. Second, a startup can move the debate. Shifting 100 million euros speaks louder than an outraged tweet. 
And finally, your data are capital. You entrust them to those who honor your privacy and you pull them when that promise frays. Switzerland, once a confidentiality haven, suffers amnesia. Proton answers with digital exile. Now it's up to you to decide where you'll plant your servers and your trust. If you think privacy deserves more than a footnote in a parliamentary report, share this video, hit subscribe, and most of all, keep your eyes open. Sometimes the mountains hide tunnels.